All right, folks. Welcome to the My Black Diabetes Meal Plan podcast. I'm joined once again by Dr. Furman. Uh, and of course, today, uh, as promised, we're having a conversation uh, around insulin medication and around the uh, standard American uh, diet. And so, you know, to, to jump this off, you know, as I've been diving into more and more research, sharing more information with the group, um, we come to this idea of balanced carbs, uh, Dr. Furman, and balanced carbs, fats, protein at every meal is promoted heavily by the American uh, Diabetes Association. Uh, and a sample breakfast might include, you know, two whole wheat pancakes, light syrup, um, a teaspoon of margarine, low fat cottage cheese, as you know, um, and it, it all sounds healthy, but I think you know better. My question is, when it doesn't it, sound healthy to me. It sounds like all junk food to me. Well, <laughs> well that's that's <laughs> right. You, you, but why would the if if a if a physician is saying that, why would the American Diabetes Association recommend something like this, knowing uh, the amount of insulin medications that will need to be prescribed just to keep the glucose levels under control? I mean, what could happen? What would happen if someone chose to follow? The, the American Diabetes Association's guidelines. Well, what we're finding, well, that's my, that's my position is that I'm claiming that the, that the dietitians and the, American, and the physicians and the diabetologists and endocrinologists and the American Diabetic Association are killing people who have type one diabetes, causing them to die in their fifties and sixties, creating incredible morbidity and mortality that didn't have to be. And, creating tragedies and amputations and blindness and destructive health of type two diabetics. So the current methodology of treating diabetics is deadly to the diabetic. And it's really, um, so we can talk about why that's happening, but they think it's okay for a type one diabetic who's now insulin dependent to be using 60 units of insulin a day. Mm. Insulin itself is a dangerous substance. It causes weight gain, it's a pro-inflammatory substance and fat on the body spews out, as you know, lipokines, cytokines, and pro-cancerous reactive material. Fat on the body promotes angiogenesis. And what's more powerful at angiogenesis promotion than high level than using high levels of insulin? What I'm saying right now is that the methodology of conventional diabetologists and the diabetic community is that we use insulin sufficiently to keep the glucose well controlled in the you know most hopefully below 100 because the favorable glucose is what we're aiming for and i'm saying that theory has been proven to kill people the fact that we're going to use enough insulin to keep our glucose well controlled they're not recognizing that high and and by the way the accord study went on for almost a decade and the, I think the government stopped it. The NIH stopped the Accord study after eight years because people with more medical care and um, more visits with the diabetic endocrinologists and nurse practitioners to measure their glucose more carefully and take medications to appropriately keep them lower in favorable ranges showed such an increased death rate and so much morbidity and mortality in those getting more medical care that the government had to stop the study because more drugs meant more death. And more drugs mean the, insulin, the diabetes advances more rapidly. I'm claiming that, the, that conventional diabetic care for both the type two and the type one accelerates the disease process, makes the people gain weight, gets the people more diabetic and accelerates their death. So I'm saying that insulin is a powerful angiogenesis promoter and promoting angiogenesis means you're promoting cells to replicate and tumors and cancers to develop. And you're developing atherosclerosis at the same time. So you're promoting a lot of, uh, and so let me give you an example. Um, there's a type one diabetic who, uh, a young man, he was using uh, an insulin pump and his insulin pump was putting out about 88 units of insulin a day. And this young man had to quit medical school because he was getting so many highs and lows and he was just not feeling well enough to concentrate enough. So he left medical school to take care of his diabetes and using about um, over 80 units of insulin a day to keep his sugars well controlled on his pump and following the advice of his conventional diabetologist. And I said to him, 
80 units of insulin a day is gonna kill you. You're a young man, you're in your 20s, you're gonna be in, in trouble by the time you're 40 or 50 or 60. You can't use, excuse me one second. Sorry. Um, so I said to this man that, um, that the high insulin is gonna kill him. And that, he, that the problem is his diet is, is so glycemically, um, pr promotes such a high glycemic level and promoting so much inflammation that the combination of the low level of phytochemicals and antioxidants in his diet, the lack of vegetables, beans, and onions, and mushrooms, which have anti-angiogenic effect right. to counter the effect of exogenous insulin. In other words, you have to consume, if you're using an angiogenesis promoter like insulin, you have to be on things that curtail the dangerous part of insulin by having anti-angiogenic foods, greens, mushrooms, onions, and you know we're talking here about um, all these um, all these powerful foods that, that keep your sugars low too, as they curtail the damage from insulin. So over a few weeks' time, we had him eating a diet that was more favorably glycemic, full of antioxidants, and took out those processed foods you were talking about: rice and bread and potato and pancakes and and pizza and you know all these things that raise glucose too high. And when he started to eat super, a, health, a really super healthy diet, he, it came down so he only required 11 units of insulin a day. 11 on his insulin pump to keep his sugars well controlled. 11 units a day. That's, we're safe using between 10 and let's say 18 or 10, maybe even some cases, 20 units of insulin a day. But the diabetologists aren't, and the endocrinologists aren't telling people, adjust your diet if you're a type one, even though you're still gonna require insulin. You shouldn't need more than 20 units of insulin a day. And if you're taking in more than 20 units of insulin a day, then your diet is, no, is, is gonna be dangerous. Because using, not only is the diet dangerous, but the high level of insulin, you need to compensate for that unhealthy diet is dangerous. So the diabetologists put a double whammy of death on people. They feed them a diet that requires too much insulin, and that diet alone is dangerous. And then they give them the insulin to cover the glucose needs of that diet, and that makes it ever so much worse so type one diabetics are destined to a shortened lifespan and, I, and, and, and a tragic life. And I'm saying type one diabetes, when they're insulin dependent, doesn't have to shorten a person's life. A person can live to be 95 to 100 years old if they use physiological amount of insulin, like this young man now who's gonna require somewhere between 10 and 15 units of insulin as a type one for the rest of his life, because he knows the right way to eat. Mm. And he's gonna be eating foods that are rich in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory substances that have powerful anti-angiogenic effects. Then he can have a normal life. And if and it works for the- It applies for the type two, because That's the right. type twos are given drugs that push the beta cells in the pancreas to secrete more insulin. So even though they're taking oral medication, they're very often given oral medication that raises the body's production of insulin, which then just has an effect to kill, to practically accelerate their death. I'm saying that um, we're, we're in the barbaric backward stage of, of diabetic care and people type two diabetics should get rid of their diabetes. I say, don't treat your diabetes, get rid of it and get rid of it within, nine, within 60 days. Mm -hmm. If you're not getting rid of your diabetes within 60 days of eating right, then either, either you're not eating right or you have a burnout of type two that you've been so taking drugs for so long that you have some beta, your beta cell losses. And that's rare. That's rare that a type two diabetic can't even get rid of their diabetes. Okay. And, and I'm hearing you say that um, what the uh, ADA has, American Diabetes Association has, the, the guidelines, the, the endocrinologist, the, there seems like there's an entire medical world here um, who have the wrong information. And, and, it seems odd to me that that the government would stop um, some of these some of these studies once they found out that mm, traditional medicine was actually causing more harm than good. Um, that seems odd. That you, if if I guess the, the question I'm always kind of trying to get at is why is this the case? Is it is it really just because there's there's more money in pharmaceuticals than 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 not? Is that worth seeing a population sort of get harmed? Or is there really a lapse in the knowledge that, that is being transferred to many of our leaders in terms of uh, 
what is actually clinical care and what, what patients actually need? Um, medical care has evolved to be an arm of the pharmaceutical industry. So a medical doctor is like a glorified pharmacist who writes prescriptions to give people drugs to enable them to live unhealthily and still control the numbers better. In other words, the medical pr um, profession has become an enabler. They're like, it's like giving enough alcohol to the alcoholic so they can, can still not to go through withdrawals from their alcohol withdrawal or, go, or giving out pr opiates, prescribing opiates to drug addicts enough so that they're gonna maintain their opiate addiction. We give people drugs sufficiently so they can not, so they can continue their addictive relationship with dangerous foods. You know, we're able to have the technology to measure blood glucose, to measure blood pressure, to measure cholesterol level. So we've developed drugs to treat these things we can measure. And healthcare today is giving people drugs so we can keep the measurable parameters in normal ranges. And it's, it's all based on a fallacy because, um, let's, for example, if you're gonna be 300 pounds and have diabetes, giving you a medication to keep the glucose favorable is a trick because you're still 300 pounds. The problem isn't the glucose, the problem is that you're 300 pounds. So we haven't, um, the medical profession did not evolve to become coaches and lifestyle professionals in order to encourage, motivate, and um, deal with people who've developed bad, um, ha bad habits and addictive relationships. And the whole population is addicted to food and the whole population is eating a deadly is diet creating um, uh, um, what you could say, heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, um, cancer, and everybody. They're all eating unhealthily, including the doctors prescribing the prescriptions. They're you know, eating the same food. So instead of talking about food as the solution, and the real solution is the combination between food and exercise and sleep, and all these things are called, called lifestyle. And you know, vegetables have the magic in them. You know, we, if we're eating a diet, we're primates, you know, we're, we're designed to be eating a vegetable-based diet. And if you don't eat a vegetable-based diet, you develop disease. And you can't mitigate that by putting poisons in your body. Like taking your hand and giving yourself a whack with a steel hammer every day. And you go to a doctor, he gives you a prescription to take the pain away. But the next day you go home and you whack it right in the same spot with a hammer again. You go back to the doctor, it's not healing. Well, people keep putting in foods that create disease in their body. And they expect doctors to, that the doctors are gonna have the answer in this pill. The first thing you learn in medical school is pill, these pills are poisonous, they're toxic. Mm. That's gonna work. You know, we can't buy good health in a bottle and you're not gonna earn good health by getting more medication from physicians. You're gonna earn, your health is determined by the lack of medication use. So the, it's the reduction of medication and the gradual elimination of medication that determines your good health. And for its and that and nothing um, is more um, demonstrative of that than di than, di than diabetes. The more medications you take for your diabetes, the more dangerous your your outcome. And the more medications you take for blood pressure, the more dangerous your outcome. We can measure a person's risk by seeing how much medications they need to control their numbers. Wow. wow. The risk of death is proportional to the amount of medications they need to control their numbers. They're going to doctors. Their numbers are being controlled. Their blood pressure looks okay. Their blood glucose looks okay. But their death is isn't gonna be, the death is accelerated by the use of medications. They're still sick. You're just covering it up. It's like putting the dirt under the rug. You think you're okay because your numbers look good. And I'm saying to you that there's no such thing as a, so a, so a type two diabetic, if they have more than 15% body fat for a male or 25% body fat for a female, then they're not caring for themselves. And they have to eat the right foods that have these anti-fat storage effects, anti-angiogenic effects, and a relatively low glycemic we're talking about low glycemic plants, which are greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, seeds, and some moderate amount of an intact whole grain like amaranth or quinoa. Not flour-based grains, but right. intact whole grains. You can cook with water and make into like a, you know, you can put a, some amaranth or quinoa and put vegetables and mushrooms and, and edamame and other things on top of them. You know, we can make it, and we can make a diet taste delicious. Too. There's just no reason to commit suicide with food these days. That's right. And, and just to go uh, back to what you were saying a moment ago, how many people do I know have seen that, that folks who are listening have known, have seen are themselves taking several, they go into the, the, the bathroom every day and they have several of their, their medication bottles 
you know, kind of stacked up and lined up. And what I'm hearing you say is uh, we can track how healthy you are by the the fewer medications you actually are taking. So if you're taking fewer medications, that probably means that your health is, is, is higher than if you're taking a whole bunch of them. And so, and to that effect, there's a lot of people who are on these, on insulin medication type two. And you talk about insulin itself as being really a silent monster. You say that insulin uh, in, in your book, uh, the end of diabetes, you say that insulin helps to deliver available cholesterol to the cells in the blood vessel walls, which increases the chances of heart attack. I was shocked to learn that nearly 80% of people with diabetes are dying from hardening arteries. Mm-hmm. And typically, well-meaning doctors, they'll prescribe even more insulin, as you've, as you've just pointed out, when patients share their concerns with them. And so if you could help us unpack Uh, and understand what is coronary uh, artery disease? And can you walk us through how insulin medication contributes to its development? Well, insulin, both insulin and IGF-1 are primary growth hormones. And when you finished growing as an adult, you're not growing, getting taller, you're getting wider. Okay. No, and we don't want to eat so, and so we can't, in order for grow fat on the body, since fat is naturally, poorly perfused with blood vessels. Insulin becomes the primary um, inducer of new blood vessel growth to allow fat to grow. So insulin is a fat storage hormone, enables us to turn the excess calories we're consuming into fat, right? So, and in doing so, the, the deposition of fat on the interior lining of the blood vessels, and by the way, the exterior wall of the blood vessel too, um, the interior lining, the, end of the fat on the inside of the deposit causes heart attacks, but fat on the exterior wall also limits the excursion and the elasticity of blood vessels, uh, contributing to heart problems and heart failure and high blood pressure. So we're talking about people have built up visceral fat, and visceral fat on the body is particularly dangerous. So I'm saying that fat on the body is so dangerous, and when a person presents with type 2 diabetes, in the, unless they're dropping at least a pound or two a week. And I don't, I consider a person on my program to be losing, need their, they need to lose two pounds a week or they're not on the program. And if they're not, if they're overweight and not dropping two pounds a week, then they're not following the right diet, frankly. And, and if you go to a doctor and you're overweight and he's going to give you a medication to make you gain weight, then to control your blood glucose like insulin is, and to put more fat on your blood vessels and to put more fat on, on, around, around your waist, then he's damaging your long-term health. Therefore, what doctors are doing or not is not worthless. It's worse than worthless. It's actually oh. harmful. I'm saying the so cause, because weight gain and fat deposition on the body is the cause of diabetes. And these medications cause more weight, fat storage, makes it harder to lose weight and make people become more diabetic. That's insulin. But then you have other medications like, you know, Avandia, um, you know, Gliburide, Glipizide, you know, mm. all these drugs who are, that they put people on too. And those yeah, are even worse than them. They're worse because they cause the, the, the beta cells in the pancreas are struggling to produce extra insulin for the person's diet, which is requiring too much. And, and fat in the body makes you require more insulin. So instead of the person losing weight, they give you a drug to force the beta cells that are pooping out to produce more insulin. And the more you force the, beta, the pooping out beta cells, the suffering beta cells that are struggling to produce too much insulin, the more you force them to produce more insulin to lower blood sugar, the more they start to poop out at a faster rate. And after years of taking those drugs, the beta cells can't produce even less insulin and you become more diabetic and need more drugs and then you need more insulin. So, that, so this is all doctor created, just like doctors create atrial, an epidemic of atrial fibrillation by giving people blood pressure medications, which lower diastolic too low, which prevent oxygenation of the heart on the, on, during diastole, which then causes irregular heartbeat. And now they got to put up people on clot busting drugs of atrial fibrillation because they created that by the blood pressure medication. So we have a whole system of medical care that's built up on doctors accelerating the progression of disease by giving people more and more drugs instead of telling people eat vegetables and beans and mushrooms and onions and get the weight off and eat nuts and seeds and stop eating so much animal products, get off the, all the processed foods and, all, and get your weight down and control, you know, and walk for an hour every day and start exercising. Instead of people earning good health, they think they can drug themselves into good health. 
Let me tell you, there's no way you could drug yourself into good health while you're eating the wrong foods. The only way to get good health is to earn it. We always say that, you know, that um, good health is earned. You can't buy it. You can't get it in a bottle. It takes work and effort, dedication, determination, and, um, and, and the ability to be, to be able to, def to consistently stay with a course of action that's getting short to turn short-term results into long-term results. It takes an effort. And anything you do with something that takes a strong effort is, is so much more rewarding emotionally, intellectually, and, effect and also effective too. Take yes, any sir. top professional athlete in the world. They didn't develop those skills without putting some effort into it, really practicing and working on it. You don't get any, a great education, athletic skills, anything you develop in life that, take, that gives you really true reward has to be put some effort into earning it. You can't just go to a doctor and take a pill to get health. That's right. And, and just like you can't go and, and take a pill to get wealth or get, take a pill to get, you know, skill as you were just talking about. Or so you're not going to see the things in basketball yeah. from not from taking a pill, you know what I mean? You're not gonna be able to hit a tennis ball like Roger Federer unless you work for thousands of hours and none, you know, no way it can happen. That's right, that's right. So, and it's so worth it, right? It's so worth it. What, uh, all of those things, shooting three points in basketball, uh, even wealth itself or, or any skill actually probably comes secondary to your health, right? Because without that, you're not gonna be enjoying any of the rewards that all those other things can produce. And so in that way, it's like, this is the number one thing that, that, it, that you ought to be putting your determination, your effort, your consideration into. And, and, and so finally- true. Your, your, your health is your greatest wealth and you don't have money. Money doesn't matter a damn if you don't have good health because you can't enjoy your life with your money. You can't do anything. If you're sick all the time, what good is your money? People are focused on their money, but they let their health go to pot. You know how many people I know that are were super wealthy who are living, a, they're living like in a nursing home or, or who died young or who went demented or psychotic or had a health deteriorate. I know, you know they, they invited me, you know, so I, in other words, what I'm saying right now is that obviously money means nothing if you don't have good health. And if you have good health and you have love in your life and you treat people with compassion and you're taking care of your health, you have a happy life if you, even if you don't have money. You can make your life happy. The, the health is everything today. Sure. And, and what you just articulated for us is the vicious cycle of taking a medication and actually becoming more sick. <laughs> you take a medication for a problem, let's say type 2 diabetes, and in the course of taking the medication, you actually become more type 2 diabetic, which requires more medication so that you become more type 2. And, and so, but the, but the part that really got me, and this is the, really the last question for, uh, for our session today, the part that really gets me is when you talk about insulin medications like Actos, like Avandia, that contribute to weight gain itself. So not just in the sense that they're um, that they're contributing to a, a pancreatic or you know a beta cell poop out, but also they're contributing to weight gain directly. Right. How? Right. So weight gain directly is making your diabetes worse. So people are seeing their glucose numbers look a little better but they're overall worsening their diabetes long-term. So you're, you're, paying a, you're, you're making a pact with the devil when you're taking these drugs. And instead of changing what you're eating, it takes people some discipline now to really learn and some, and some effort to learn how to cook the food, how to make the recipes, how to make them taste good, to know exactly what they should eat each meal. When you do the right things, the right things happen. So yes, these medications work by, um, you know, glucophage or metformin does not cause weight gain and does not push the failing beta cells to work harder. So that medication is getting a, um, a free ride from us right now. Sure. We're not talking about that medication, but Evandia and um, Actos and the other gliburide and glipizide and all those medications do increase the body's endogenous secretion of insulin, mm. which, is, which you shouldn't be doing in a type 1 diabetes, in my opinion, because those drugs should be taken off the market. They shouldn't be allowed to be purchased or utilized. When a person comes to see me as a patient, I completely take them away off those drugs immediately. And then I control what they eat to control their sugars. And they may have to walk for a half an hour after every meal to get their sugar down, but they're not gonna be taking poisons to get their sugar down. <laughs> and and that's, that's, that is excellent. Um, and, and for folks who are really serious about getting off of medications, we're actually including uh, Dr. Furman's T20 program with each subscription. So Dr. Mark Furman has worked with thousands of patients and 90% of those who follow his recommendations can get off insulin medication within 60 days and oftentimes within 30. And so 
we want you to be next. So go to myblackdiabetesmealplan.com and get started with the quiz. It's going to um, put you through a series of questionnaires that will allow you to select the plans that are right for you. And for those who are seeking to get off a of medication, one of these is coming inside of each one of your subscriptions. Dr. Furman, I have to thank you once again uh, for, for jumping on the call with us, for coming in, for speaking with us, for to, to, to offering this wisdom that's taken you 30 years to, to accumulate. And, and I just really wanna say, we, we appreciate you. We love what you do. And, and we very much thank you for, for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Such a, a pleasure of me. Every person that you reach, and you convert from a sick person to get them healthy and well again and add years to their life is such a joyous thrill. And I'm glad to be part of it and have that in, and make that happen for you, for you and, your, and your people that you're helping and caring for. So very exciting. Thanks so much, Dr. Furman. And we'll be seeing you next month uh, as usual. Uh, in the meantime, folks, you'll be able to find all the links that we've been uh, talking about in the description. Uh, and remember to head over to the site to actually grab your plan and we'll see you all next month. Thanks so much.